calls. Gary in Santa Maria is with us. Hi, Gary. Go ahead. Oh, thank you, George. Sure. 13 years waiting for this phone call. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I was uh, in uh, your group on a redundant pre-stimulus response back in 2003, May 4th, 2003, and uh, it took quite a bit of digging, and I found out that I was in the top 3% of the 125 people that were tested, that was out uh, um, by uh, Los Feliz. I, uh, I remember that, that, yes. That with James Spottiswood. Yes. Yeah, um, and that set me on a whole new career path. I uh, kind of quit my day job of uh, programming artificially intelligent systems and and uh, focused on uh, PK man uh like scenarios, but I was blending it into astrology that I adapted to artificial intelligence because the two go hand in hand in glove uh, perfectly. And then most recently, and the most astounding thing, are the 10 different tests that I've done on coast-to-coast -coast experiments, of which George kind of started getting his patients uh, running a little short with me because I kept going back to the same topic, and that is taking my favorite punching bag genetic engineering company that I won't name and asking the audience to think their stock price going down. Well, 10 times out of 10 times, it went down. You're into stock predictions and market predictions. The difference that George and I have, and I hope you can weigh in on this, is – when you talk about thought control, not mind control, thought control, if I try to control your thoughts, there's only a one out of 538 possibility that I will chime in at your exact octave or frequency. But when you have an audience the size of Coast, 538 people will cover practically the entire population. So when you put out the vague notion of stock price going down, and you have a number of people concentrating on that, <laughs> you chime in on those day traders. You chime in on the people responsible for the decisions. They don't even know it's not their thought. The thought comes from within them, but they end up selling the package. It's right there out in public. I wanted to do what Owen did, but make it so public. Every time that I was on the air, it's recorded. You go and you take a two-year view of that genetic engineering company that's easy to find, compare it with the stock market price, put it on a two-year view, and you will see stair-step after stair-step, down, 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 down. It went from $125 a share all the way down to 83 at the lowest point, and now it's languishing about 90, which is fine by me. Um, thought control, mass consciousness can work. Well, is, isn't that what Ted Owens did, basically, Jeffrey? Thought control? <laughs> well, he never worked on the stock market. No, he didn't, he, he didn't do that, of course. No, but. So this is quite different, and I guess all of this began with the uh, experiment you participated in back in 2004. Is that right? Yes, it, it all stemmed uh, from that. And, uh, in fact, I got on the bad side of uh, Spottiswood because they sent us our individual results. Everybody was assigned a number to keep the double-blind nature, which was important to Spottiswood. Yeah. And I kept pressing to find out how I did in comparison to everybody else, and I finally got through and got the final results. Now, I think Spottis, those results have got to be around someplace. It was keyed off of email, but Spottiswood was... Is Spottiswood still alive? His website hasn't been updated in a decade. Yeah, no, he is. He, he's alive and he's active. Um, well, he may, he may remember. Uh, I wouldn't even know... I would recognize the name of the provider I was using. That was in the 5600 baud days, by the way, 2003. Um, but I, and uh, in keeping with your profile, I had my first major left frontal lobe brain trauma at age seven, again at age 18, and again at age 42. All on the same side, really disabled, uh, 
debilitating brain injury all to the left frontal lobe. Each time that I recovered, even worked with Tim, Timothy Leary up in, uh, up in Berkeley for a while. And, but it was because of that one experiment where I, I, I categorically you know, came out to be one of the, the three superstars of, of that experiment that really put me on track to, to working with this. And then with uh, George's help and the Coast audience, uh, um, uh, and witches have done the same thing, where they cast a spell and some causes something to happen. Not, it's not woo-woo. It's just coming in at somebody's exact frequency. You've got to take the sun sign, the rising sign, and the moon sign. That's 1,728 possibilities. That's it. Well, well, that's fascinating. It is. It works, does it, Jeffrey? Uh, it sounds like this individual has has the potential to participate in some very serious research. I think so.